Hey guys, there's an epilepsy warning at the beginning of this video, and um, if you have epilepsy, just skip to this time so you can avoid it. Hey guys, what's up? It's uh, CBR. I'm pretty usual today. Um, pretty normal. Um, oh wait, it's not. Did you guys see this? We got a custom sign. It's really sick. It's really cool. Got it for Christmas. You know, it's got that, it's a little bright, but you know, it's really sick. Like, I, I have modes on it. Like, I can give you epilepsy. I can give you a more epilepsy. Man, this one's kind of blinking. I can also give you that, that. Yeah, I can just give you slow burning epilepsy. And it can give you faster. And it can, yeah. So, uh, that's cool. And, um, yeah. So, uh, that is the new sign. That is really bright, and yeah, today we're here to review the brand new Zachary Levi movie, um, American Underdog. So American Underdog is a real life story, and it's um, a pretty interesting one. It's about uh, uh, Kurt Warner, which uh, played for the Los Angeles Rams, and uh, he was a nobody who played a ton of football and was pretty well known in Arena Football League, which we'll get to later, but um... He was a uh, he made a name for himself kind of and um just put himself out there constantly and got rejected and uh, this is the story of his life and football and um yeah. So honestly, I've seen a lot of these types of movies, same Kingdom Story Company uh kind of brand movies. Um these movies are Christian movies mostly and uh, they have a inspirational message to them with a big name star at the title role. Now, this movie is exactly like the 2018 uh, I Can Only Imagine movie, which I fairly enjoyed. Um, honestly, I don't really know why this movie didn't entirely click for me. I think it may have been the simple premise-ish and some of the empty plot holes. I think mostly the one main problem I had with this movie was flushing out its side plots. Now, the big tornado that hit Arkansas... That that was just brushed upon. Like I, uh, the main girl, her family died, and um, yeah, yeah. So the main love interest, Brenda, her parents both die in their house during the tornado, and they just brush off like it barely happened. Like it's just over like that. Uh, I really didn't care for the whole like college stuff honestly i know it kind of boosts his motivation but i didn't really like it that much uh some other side plots and um decisions that they took with the story are really similar to movies like miracles from heaven i can only imagine on breakthrough and i just don't know why this movie didn't click for me as much as other people like my family enjoyed it a good bit but for me i think it's kind of a basic film with some great like plot elements and characters but like they weren't flushed out and literally kurt had barely any development over the second third act and um i just really thought this one was like okay um here's a little synopsis so pretty much american underdog shows kurt warner's college dreams of becoming the nfl's mvp and all that and it shows him through college and he meets this girl uh brenda and they eventually get married and they're just like, I guess he had a love at first sight reaction. And um, they're just together. And she has these two kids. One's blind. His name is Zach. And there's another one they barely touched on. And uh, Zach is really cool because the actor for him is actually blind. So Hayden Zoller is actually blind in real life. And working with him on set, I've heard, is really cool. Uh, he's a nice kid and all that. And in the movie, he's great. Like, for for a blind kid it's really cool and i like the diversity that they used in this movie and sticking true to the actual story uh overall like this first act was just kind of like eh i guess like it was interesting setting up the premise enough and you see kurt he goes to the packers gets denied he finally gets together with his um love at first sight girl and it's like cute and all that and I just thought it was fine. I guess it's a good opening act. And then we get to the second act, which um, he's playing more college ball. He uh, tries with the Packers and they deny him. Like, well, he had a chance, but he could never remember the playbook and just didn't have it. And he got cut from that. He was really mad and he takes it all out on Brenda. And 
in in a little bit but um yeah i just didn't think that the whole way they did that was just poorly paced the pacing in this movie is just not good and um i think that's the only main problem i really have with this movie is the pacing they brush through a ton of emotional moments that could have a lot of hurt but they get it done so they could get to the big football scenes like he gets uh like offered to play arena football which is kind of stupid in my opinion but you know it's a good way to make money he makes a ton of money off touchdowns game wins and he finally gets together with Brenda after being away, being with like being parties and everything, and she and him break up, and it's really sad. And I just don't really know how that they did that in so quick. They did it so quick through like one scene, and I just didn't care for it. I really thought I think the acting was good, but the way they played it out was so fast and had no emotional depth to it that I really didn't care for it that much. Okay, we get to the part with a tornado that wipes out Brenda's parents, and that's just whatever, I guess. Like uh, they, they brush through it really, really quickly, and that's probably why I didn't care for it. They get back together, and, um, yeah, so, uh, Kurt watches the kids, and they get back together, and when she comes home from taking a break about all that, he proposes, she says yes, all that, they get married, and then they get the final game of the Arena Bowl, and it's crazy, even though they lose, which is really heartbreaking, but, um, Kurt also gets offered a job at the Rams. So it's crazy. So he gets the job at the Rams and there's a rookie quarterback. He's on the bench, but and he gets his first start in a preseason game or regular game. I don't really remember. And the head offensive coordinator does not have faith in him until he talks to the head coach where the head coach really likes him. And he is old. He is slow. He's all this, all that. But Dennis Quaid shows up as the head coach and he just doesn't care. And it's crazy to think that Kurt Warner actually worked at a grocery store for a few weeks to make money, or a while actually, probably a year, I think, because they skip a year because of the awful pacing. But he also worked at a grocery store for a long time and tried to provide for his family. And then he became the NFL's MVP and Super Bowl winner in his rookie season. It's crazy. Now, honestly, I think the movie's pacing should have fleshed out the big father some relationship that the coach and um kurt had but um you know what's really the point it was a it was just pretty satisfying ending pretty emotional and well what's the word inspirational movie and um i had like a fairly good time i just think it was really really basic and not one of my personal favorites of the year i'm feeling a strong five on this movie but um i don't know check this one out if you like these kind of movies and um yeah that's about it Got some more reviews coming up. We got West Side Story, which I'll, I'm working on right now. We got Sing 2. Uh, I think Licorice Pizza I'm going to check out eventually. So, um, yeah. I'll, I'll see you guys later. Shit.